Today, I want to share three of our favorite tofu recipes for you tofu lovers out there, and maybe to convert any haters out there. To start, we're making my dad's Cantonese twist on a Sichuan classic. Mapo tofu! Mapo tofu with pork. To start, we'll dice up a piece of green onion. Next, we'll dice up the shallots. We'll smash and peel two cloves of garlic. Then we'll mince the garlic. Next, we'll cut the mini sweet pepper in half lengthwise and remove the seeds. We'll first cut into strips. Then rotate to dice. Now we're done with the aromatics. We have all of these ingredients listed on our blog at madewithlao.com, along with step-by-step -step instructions and video clips to guide you as you make the recipe at home. Now let's move on to the main ingredient, the tofu. Teresa from Patreon asks, does the tofu need to be pressed? After we rinse the tofu with water, we'll turn our knife horizontally and cut it in half. If you want to learn how to cut twice as fast and prevent injuries, we have a free six minute video lesson for you. Click the link in our description or scan the QR code to access it for free. With the tofu cut, we'll set up our stove and wok to start cooking. After heating the wok on high for about a minute and a half, we'll add oil. Notice how my dad spreads the oil evenly in the wok, both left and right, forward and back. After 30 to 40 seconds of heating the oil, we'll add the garlic, shallots, and dried chilies. After the aromatics are fragrant, or 15 to 20 seconds later, we'll add 3 ounces of minced pork. Note how my dad constantly moves the pork around and breaks it up into smaller pieces, which is better for this dish. What is the best substitute for pork? How do you make this completely vegetarian? Just not add the pork. <laughs> <laughs> After stir frying the pork for about a minute, we'll add an essential sauce for flavor. <laughs> Mapo tofu has a somewhat unfortunate origin story. Also known as Mapo tofu in Cantonese, it originated from the Sichuan province of China just 150 years ago. The dish is named after the woman who created it, with the word ma meaning pockmarked, a reference to the small pox scars that covered her face. Po means wife or old woman, and the family restaurant was eventually named after her and still exists today. There are a few differences between my dad's recipe and a more traditional Sichuan version, which features chili bean sauce, or la dao ban zheng, which is often called the soul of Sichuan cuisine, and includes fermented beans and chili peppers. It also often includes the signature Sichuan peppercorns, which create a spicy, numbing sensation in your mouth. My dad's mapo tofu is more of a Cantonese homestyle version and instead uses ground bean sauce, or min si zheng, another fermented bean sauce which serves the same purpose as chili bean sauce but is not spicy. Instead, we're adding dried chilies and some chili sauce to add just a bit of spiciness to our liking. After adding the bean sauce, we'll add water. We'll let the sauce simmer on low as we add the seasoning. Oh yeah. Here we Sang chow, 
We'll add about a half teaspoon of chili sauce here, but you can adjust according to your taste. We're using Guaylin style chili sauce here. Some people ask, how do you get a really bright red color? Uh, I have a classmate when I was in uh, nursing school. Her parents from Sichuan. All her dish on the table is all red. She told me it's from the chili sauce. Now we can add the tofu. How do you prevent breaking the tofu? After adding the tofu and mixing it into the sauce, we'll cover the wok. While the tofu simmers, we'll create a cornstarch slurry with one and a half tablespoons of cornstarch and two tablespoons of water. Then we'll mix so that the cornstarch is dissolved into the water. We'll uncover the wok after one and a half to two minutes of simmering. We added another half tablespoon of dark soy sauce here to get the color we wanted. Then it's time to add the slurry. Then we'll mix in the slurry and let it thicken the sauce. After letting the sauce thicken and simmer on low for another two minutes, we'll add our final garnishes. After adding some of our green onions, we'll add the sweet peppers. Finally, we'll mix in our sesame oil. Now, we could turn off the heat and plate, but if your consistency is not exactly as you like it, my dad added a tablespoon of water to his because he thought it was too thick. Then he did it back up before serving. Okay, got it. Now we can plate and garnish with the rest of our green onions and serve to our family. Cheers! Moi Moi's first cheers! Moi Moi's first cheers! cheers. Moi Moi's first cheers. 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 cheers! Now we'll make one of the most addictive fried vegetarian dishes out there. Tofu. Salt and pepper tofu, a vegetarian version of the famous salt and pepper style dishes in Cantonese cuisine. There's a lot to love about this dish, from the nuanced spicy and salty seasonings to the crispy yet tender texture of the tofu in each bite. First, my dad will show you how to prep the vegetables like a Chinese chef. We'll dice up just the white parts of four pieces of green onion here. To prepare these sweet peppers, we'll slice them first in half lengthwise. Then we'll remove the core and any seeds with our hands. We'll then cut them into strips lengthwise. Then turn 90 degrees to dice. We're using three different colors of peppers here to give the dish some more visual appeal. We'll peel, smash, and mince two cloves of garlic. Now we're ready to introduce the star of the show, the tofu. First, we'll drain the water from the tofu. My dad prefers to give the tofu a quick rinse with water before cutting it. First, we'll turn our knife sideways and cut our tofu in half. Then we'll cut our tofu lengthwise in half. Then those two pieces each in half, ending up with four equal parts. We'll then cut it horizontally the same way, into four equal parts. If you prefer slightly smaller pieces, you can cut the block into more parts, but my dad prefers this larger size, which is about one inch by one inch. Smaller pieces will fry quicker, so adjust your cooking time accordingly. Now this next step is my dad's special technique to get that perfect tofu texture and flavor. We'll add one teaspoon of salt to the water. We'll stir the water to make sure the salt is all dissolved. 
After we add the tofu, we'll make sure all the pieces are submerged, then we'll cover our pot and with the heat on high, we'll wait for it to boil. When the water boils, or after about 2 to 3 minutes, we'll remove the lid and turn the heat to low and we'll let it boil for 2 more minutes. This seems counterintuitive, but due to osmosis, boiling the tofu in water and adding salt will actually dry out the excess moisture in the tofu with the bonus of also seasoning it. Doing this will result in a firmer texture, a better flavor, and make it much easier to fry later since less water will come out when frying. Now we'll pour out our tofu into a strainer, letting the water drain from it. We'll set it aside to let it drain and cool off a bit. In the West, tofu sometimes has this connotation that it's a substitute or that it needs to be dressed up to taste good. But in Asian culture, tofu is often the star of the show. Also known as daofu in Cantonese, it originates from China, dating back to at least the 10th century. If you're wondering how it's made, tofu starts off as soy milk, coagulated to form curds, and depending on the final product, it's pressed to form tofu cakes. There are countless types of tofu, from silken to extra firm, pickled, fermented, pre-fried, or mixed with egg. Tofu is celebrated in Chinese cuisine as a wildly adaptable source of protein. Featured in a variety of dishes, from silken tofu with syrup as dessert, to the savory and saucy mapo tofu, to our deep fried salt and pepper dish today. Now, my dad will show us his technique for getting that perfectly crispy outside. We'll add four to five tablespoons of cornstarch and spread it out on a plate. We'll beat our egg and set it aside. We'll pour our tofu cubes onto a plate covered with a clean kitchen or paper towel. We'll also use some paper towels on the top to dry the tofu as much as we can. Now we can transfer the tofu to a large bowl. We'll pour in just half of the egg here. Now we'll gently mix the egg in with the tofu. Then place the tofu onto the cornstarch we spread out on the plate earlier, making sure each piece is touching the cornstarch on the bottom. With our hands, we'll spread about another tablespoon of cornstarch over the top of the tofu. What's the best flour to dredge the tofu resulting in an airy type crunch? <laughs> How do you get the tofu to stick to the batter? With the heat on high, we'll add about 16 fluid ounces of oil to the pot. As the oil heats up, we'll prepare to drop in our tofu with our spider strainer. When the oil reaches around 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius, we'll drop in our tofu gently, being careful not to splash the oil. Once the tofu is in, be careful not to mix it too much right away or the batter will fall off. But we'll make sure to separate any pieces that are stuck to each other. We'll add in the remaining pieces on the side so they don't stick to any of the pieces. Jim from Patreon asks, how do you make sure the 
tofu doesn't clump together. Yeah, they they don't stick. You just slowly slowly put some things. Don't do it all at once. Cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. Like me, I don't like it. Because the tofu is very soft. You need to cut it fine. It's like that. The water is 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 like that. We'll gently mix the pieces around so they fry evenly. What fuck choy gan gan? How do you just get a crispy tofu in general? 俾啲滾水煮過佢勁乾水，即係一定要乾水啲，唔好唔好唔好咁慢火炸，慢火炸炸唔到嘅。好似我頭先咁慢火啲炸，掉落嚓一聲，佢啲皮先至收得緊，收緊啲入邊啲水唔會走出嚟。如果你慢慢炸，慢慢炸，咁嗰啲入邊嗰啲水流失咗，個豆腐入邊咪乾曬咯，咬落咁咪唔唔得滑咯。炸呢個咧又一定要外邊就脆，入邊就軟，咁就成功啦。成功靚唔靚啊？仲中意咁啊？因為炸起擺咗上嚟，佢會仲轉啲轉色嘅，已經生火啦。When the tofu is golden brown, or after about five to six minutes of frying at 360 to 380 degrees Fahrenheit, we'll turn off the heat and scoop out our tofu. Now we'll set the tofu aside to let the excess oil drain and get our wok ready for our final cooking step. Now, if you want to wok, the oil from the oil will be enough. A little bit of oil will be enough. Don't worry too much. We'll add about a tablespoon of the oil we just used to the wok. If you want to add more oil, the oil will be enough. Don't worry too much. We'll add about a tablespoon of the oil we just used to the wok. If you want to add more oil, the oil will be enough. Don't worry too much. We'll add about a tablespoon of the oil we just used to the wok. If you want to add more oil, the oil will be enough. Don't worry too much. We'll add about a tablespoon of the oil we just used to the wok. If you want to add more oil, the oil will be enough. Don't worry too much. We'll add about a tablespoon of the oil we just used to the wok. If you want to add more oil, the oil will be enough. Don't worry too much. We'll add about a tablespoon of the oil we just used to the wok. If you want to add more oil, the oil will be enough. Don't worry too much. We'll add after just 10 to 15 seconds of stir frying the chilies, we'll add our garlic. Then we'll remove the dried chilies. After the garlic is slightly brown, or about 15 to 20 seconds, we'll add the rest of our veggies. After a quick 20 to 30 seconds of stir frying, we'll add in our tofu. After a quick toss, we'll sprinkle on about half our seasoning with our hands. We'll be a bit conservative with how much to add here, since we can always add more later. My dad likes to serve the remaining seasoning with the dish, so each person can add more if they want. We'll toss for another 30 seconds, making sure the seasoning is evenly mixed. Okay, and we're ready to plate. Now for a brief summary of the cooking process. With the tofu all cut and coated, one, we'll heat oil in a pot up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Then two, gently place the tofu pieces into the oil, but don't move them around too much initially or the batter will fall off. If you're new to deep frying, fry it in batches to make it easier. We'll deep fry the tofu for five to six minutes at 360 to 380 degrees Fahrenheit or until they're golden brown. Make sure to separate any pieces that are stuck together and to gently move the pieces around. Three, then we'll remove the tofu from the oil and let the oil drain. Four, moving to our wok, we'll add oil, then we'll add dried chilies, taking them out after 10 to 15 seconds. Then add garlic, followed by our veggies, and stir fry for 20 to 30 seconds. Five, then we'll add our tofu, followed by half of our seasoning, toss for 30 seconds, then plate. Now let's see if Cam Cam likes this salt and pepper dish. You like it, bud? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Mmm, tasty, huh? Mm. Do you want more? You want more? Yeah. yeah. What is your favorite salt pepper food? Yeah, mine is squeezed. <laughs> I think mine's tofu. Oh, your it's tofu? your favorite? Yeah, I love salt and pepper tofu. Mm. Tofu, shrimp, squid. squid. Mm -hmm. How about you? Squid. Oh, Cam Cam, how about fan. you? We're friends. We, are oh. we both like squeezed, okay? Chiu yim tofu, zhao zhao la. Hei mo dai ga zhong yi. Lastly, we'll make a dish that'll forever change the way you see tofu. My dad's Jing Yang Tofu Steamed Stuffed Tofu. From its juicy handmade filling to its succulent sauce, this dish is the stuff of legends. First, we're gonna learn the secrets for the perfect filling, the old fashioned way. Our filling will be made with fish and shrimp, so we'll peel our shrimp first. <laughs> Now for the fish part of the filling. Now, 
。呢度兩條肉係八緊安市咁上下，佢話撈埋十緊安市嘅蝦肉咁上下，多啲少啲冇所謂喎。首先切薄佢嗱。We're actually using the same filling that my dad made for our Chinese stuffed peppers recipe. For a more comprehensive look at making the filling, check out the first few minutes of that video. As a summary, we'll chop and smash the fish a few times, then do the same for our shrimp. We'll then mix both together and make sure it's well blended. If you want to save some time and energy, my dad recommends using a food processor to blend the fish and shrimp. When the filling is a sticky paste, we can marinate it. For the marinade for the paste, we'll use one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of sugar, half a teaspoon of white pepper, two tablespoons of cornstarch, and two tablespoons of water. After mixing the marinade, we'll pour it into our filling. We'll add about a tablespoon of sesame oil, then mix it in well. Of course, to skip these steps entirely, you can just buy fish paste or shrimp paste from your local Asian grocery store. Certain types will need to be marinated, while others are pre-marinated. We'd recommend cooking a small spoonful of the paste and tasting it to see what seasoning it needs, if any. With the filling ready, we'll prepare the yummy base for it to sit on, the tofu. First, we'll drain the water from the tofu. Then we'll remove the tofu from the package so we can cut it. First, cut it in half lengthwise. Then cut horizontally into five equal parts. That'll get us ten pieces of tofu. Now we'll put all of our tofu into a heat-resistant serving plate. Tofu selection is key. We always match the firmness with the cooking method. Since we're steaming this, which is a gentle form of cooking, we can use softer tofu. For more abrasive methods like braising, pan frying, or deep frying, we would need firmer tofu to ensure it doesn't fall apart. We'll dry the tops of our tofu with a paper towel, then sprinkle on a little bit of salt. After that, we'll add some cornstarch. We'll sprinkle just a bit on each piece to help the filling stick. With our tofu prepared, let's grab the filling from the fridge and start placing it onto the tofu. We'll put roughly a tablespoon or so of filling onto each piece of tofu and press down gently. For this version, we're not technically stuffing the tofu, but just letting the filling sit on top and sticking to it. We'll put a dash of oil onto each piece for a shinier final result. With our tofu and filling ready, let's create the tasty sauce that'll complete this dish. Now we'll mix it a bit and set it aside for later. With our sauce prepared, we're finally ready to steam.
In a large wok, my dad added hot water up to the bottom of a steamer rack. Once the water boils, we'll add our plate with the tofu. We'll close the lid and let it steam on high for 8 to 10 minutes. According to legend, stuffed tofu was born out of a fight. Two loud, stubborn friends were bickering about what to eat at a restaurant. Unfortunately, they were polar opposites. One was craving meat, and the other demanded tofu. Neither of them would compromise, and the argument was getting heated. Something had to be done to keep the peace. The chef, with a flash of brilliance, married their desires by stuffing meat into tofu. In the process, he created a dish that kept their friendship from falling apart and changed the course of history forever. Whether or not this story is true, this dish has since spread and evolved across China and beyond. The Hakka people created perhaps the most well-known version of stuffed tofu, originally featuring a meat-based filling. As they migrated towards the southern coasts of China and beyond, they started incorporating seafood, like fish paste and shrimp, into the filling. My dad's version of stuffed tofu is a common Cantonese-style adaptation, opting for soft tofu and steaming, a healthier alternative to the fried versions. While the tofu steams, my dad will prepare the garnish. We'll dice up two pieces of green onion. <laughs> Now, after just eight minutes of steaming on high, we can uncover the wok. We'll sprinkle on some green onions. Now we can turn off the heat. With the tofu steam, my dad will show you how he cooks the sauce we mixed earlier. For convenience, my dad just uses another wok here, but feel free to wash and dry the same wok you used for steaming. We'll heat the wok on high, then add a tablespoon of oil. Now we'll thoroughly mix the sauce from earlier and add it to the wok. We'll mix the sauce around and make sure it's not too hot. My dad adds water here because he thinks the sauce is too thick, but that is down to preference. Then we'll scoop the sauce into a bowl for serving. If you're serving immediately, you can also drizzle some of the sauce onto the stuffed tofu right away, but again, that's down to preference. YouTube thinks you'll like this recipe next. Let's see if they're right. A huge thank you to our walk stars and all of our chefs in the Kanto Cooking Club.